The Empire's on the run. Alex Jones and the GCN Radio Network. Hi folks, Alex Jones here with some important information. I want to tell you about Matt Redhawk and his team of patriots over at My Patriot Supply. Several years ago, Matt was sitting in his two-bedroom apartment, frustrated with the direction this country was headed, and the charlatans willing to sell us out for a quick buck. Deciding to take action, a company run by Patriots for Patriots was born. My Patriot Supply has never taken a loan or accepted outside funding. They now operate two distribution facilities and employ over 50 hardworking American men and women. It is rare to find companies who practice what they preach. And that's why I stock my pantry with high-quality storable foods from My Patriot Supply. Go to MyPatriotSupply.com forward slash Alex today for special offers on emergency food storage or call their preparedness specialist at 866-229-0927. That's 866-229-0927. Do business with someone who shares your values. MyPatriotSupply.com slash Alex. In the near future. When you realize how fake it all is, the football, the security basketball. Alert. Security alert. This is Homeland Security. Analysis. InfoWars building independent media operations. We let the worst people get controlled and tell us that we are the ones responsible. Prime Directive discredit Alex Jones. Jones is the wildly popular conspiracy theorist. It's a popular conspiracy theory talk show called InfoWars. Alex Jones is now in an Austin jail. These people are assaulted. Targeting of Patriots Engaged. They are never going to stop. They're never going to deviate from their program until we stop them. Block free iPhone app at InfoWars.com. Block free podcast and video feed. Imperative destroy Prison Planet TV. You gotta set your eye on the enemy, not worry about what propaganda they put out intellectually. It's because you can feel it. This is Leanne McAdoo for InfoWarsLife.com. I'm here with Dr. Edward Group, master herbologist and chief formulator behind the InfoWars Life products. Dr. Group, what have you been hearing from women who've started taking super female vitality? You know, we've heard the reviews and feedback from super male vitality from emails to even excited callers on the radio. Now, the answer for women is here. A new formulation specifically designed for the female body, super female vitality delivers 10 key herbs that work synergistically to revitalize the unique biology of women. I'm so glad that you guys made this for women. When he brought me home the bottle of Super Female, I had tons of energy, tons of motivation, a lot of drive. My husband thinks I've been in a better mood. Our relationship, all I can say, is it's a lot better now. I've just started taking Super Female Vitality from InfoWarsLife.com. Supplies are limited, so secure yours today at InfoWarsLife.com, InfoWarsStore.com, or dial 1-888-253-3139. Defending the Republic from enemies, foreign and domestic. It's Alex Jones. Welcome back to the Alex Jones Show. I'm David Knight. And I'm going to be here the rest of the hour. We're going to have Daniel Estelin with us in the next hour. And we're going to talk to him. This is somebody, we're, we're focusing on freedom of speech and the importance of a free press. And Daniel Estelin is somebody who has been fighting against the suppression of information as far as Bilderberg goes. He's been fighting against that for decades. So we want to get his comments on that. And we're going to be talking to him. But in this next sector, I want to talk about uh, what happened at Tiananmen Square in the uh, preceding 25 years. You know, when this happened at Tiananmen Square, they had a lot of American uh, icons, quotes. They even had a Statue of Liberty there. 1776 has inspired a lot of people around the world. We were in Copenhagen. People there were saying that they were bemoaning the fact that in Copenhagen, they didn't have any founders who were saying the kinds of things about individual liberty that we had in America. And even though our Constitution is being subverted, they said that's a very powerful thing that you can go back and fall back on that. You know, we have a product line called Made in 1776. It's one way that you can stand with us and stand behind us so that we can go to these places and report on these things. You can find that at InfoWarsStore.com. It's all made in America. It is, we've got competitive prices there. We've got things like caps and belt buckles, which I personally like to take with me whenever I go anywhere because uh, I love the idea that this revolution, that freedom, that the principles that we have 
go back to 1776. And as we've said over and over again, that is the answer to the Orwellian 1984 state that they are building. But we have men's and ladies' lines of garments, again, that's made in America. It's one way that you can patriotically support our operation here as well as businesses in the United States that are work making this. It's not being shipped out to China. So please consider that. That's Made in 1776 line at InfoWarsStore.com. Now, on the 25th anniversary of Tiananmen Square, <clears throat> it's interesting Excuse me. It's interesting for us to go back and look at what people are saying now. We have people who were there at the time making speeches. There was a very interesting speech at a Second Amendment rally uh, just a year or two ago. A guy that was at Tiananmen Square that now lives in America. He was talking to gun owners about the importance of having firearms. He said, both your founders here in this country as well as Mao, understood that power comes out of the barrel of a gun. That was Mao's quote. But quote, Mao also said that he was going to control the firearms. And this is what else that fellow had to say at that rally in Massachusetts. 23 years ago, I was a freshman year of college uh, in China. And I was exercising my freedom of speech and assembly in Tiananmen Square. At that time, much like what we're doing today, we grew frustrated by the governmental corruption, we grew frustrated by the limitation of personal freedom, so we demonstrated peacefully. However, the young passion and patriotism were crushed by hails of food of metal jackets by the AK-47s. Or some of you will say that's actually technically type, four, uh, type 56. <laughs> <laughs> we could not fight back because we did not have an inch of iron in our hands to borrow a Chinese expression. We were not armed. Gun owners like us often say the Second Amendment is the protector against a tyrannical government. that a man with a rifle has no standing against the military technology and machine of today. <laughs> However, I would say that 20 million citizens in Beijing sure wish that they had some rifles to dispense at those days. Do you know that Chinese constitution guarantees almost all the nice things that we have here? It is written in Chinese constitution that Chinese citizens enjoy freedom of speech and religion. They have human rights and property rights. And such rights cannot take away without the due process of the law. And do you know what? Chinese people do not have the rights to keep and bear arms. I assure you, all those nice things written on Chinese constitution are not worth the weight of the paper they're printed on. Because when government has all the guns, they have all the rights. Absolutely. When government has all of the guns, they have all of the rights. You hear the list of things that are recognized in the Chinese constitution. It sounds just like ours, doesn't it? But when you don't hold people to the law, when you don't hold government officials to the constitution that they swore to, we devolve into something no different from the Chinese communist government. Now, one of the things he said there is I said, well, people say that you can't use weapons against a state-of-the-art military, that it's not going to be effective. And he said, well, what if 20 million Chinese had had small firearms? Remember that when there was a standoff in the Warsaw Ghetto, originally the Jews that were there didn't have any firearms. They got a hold of a few sidearms, and with that, they held down a panzer division for quite some time, for several weeks till they burned them out. But I really want to focus on the First Amendment, because that is still a very powerful thing. Although it is guaranteed by our Second Amendment rights, which act as a deterrent, and we saw that act as a deterrent at Bunkerville, at the Bundy Ranch standoff, I was there. 
And every time I have gone, every time since I've been here, that we've had a demonstration that InfoWars has been a part of, if people were simply carrying weapons, not using weapons, there haven't been any weapons used, but if people have weapons on them, the government behaves very differently. The one time that I've seen out of the four where we've had a tense standoff like that, the only time where people were attacked was when there was nobody that was armed. It is a very effective deterrent. But CNN, as they're going back and looking at this, they're kind of patting themselves on the back, talking about the CNN effect. In other words, when they're there filming what's happening, it kind of pulled back the Chinese government. They were there covering it live. And after that, people started to talk about the effect that a free press, an honest coverage of an event had in terms of stopping tyranny. Now, of course, eventually... They were not there when the government moved against the demonstrators. They eventually got tired of that, just as they did at Waco. And I want to look at how they have completely suppressed what happened there for 25 years. You know, for more than 25 years, the government as well as the mainstream press was able to cover up the fact that Bilderberg even existed. It's been almost, uh, I guess it's been about, what, 22 years since Waco? We've seen the government cover up many of the things that have been done there, even though there have been documentaries most American citizens have not gone back and revisited what happened there and looked at those documentaries. We've seen 9-11 now. We're 12 years into that. That has completely remade our legal system, and yet most people don't understand many things about that in spite of very good documentaries that have gone out. One of those, especially that Alex was in, involved in, in Loose Change, 50 million people have watched that. But many people are still ignorant of what's going on with that. And as I read in the last half hour, they went back eight years ago and talked to students at the university where the Tiananmen Square protests began. They had no idea what this picture of the guy standing in front of the tank was. But I want to talk about the fact that it's not a CNN effect. It's a First Amendment effect. You know, this is where CNN is bragging about the fact this is a watershed story for them. This is where they really took off, uh, where people really started paying attention to them because they were going... 24 hours a day. And of course, CNN did have some good work earlier this uh, week. They were covering unrest in Turkey, and they had a journalist there. His name is Watson. Uh, no relation, I guess, to our journalist, uh, Watson. But he was hassled and he was arrested. He courageously covered these stories that were going on there. And yet, we've also seen another side to CNN. We've seen that when they were going into uh, when the Iraq war was beginning, we saw them fake. Uh, reports that were supposed to be live on site with gas masks, a very funny video that we've shown over and over again here at InfoWars. We have seen that they shut down, the people who were higher up shut down Amber Lyon when she exposed anti-government rallies in Bahrain. Uh, she eventually left CNN because of that censorship. She said, I couldn't believe CNN was making me put what I knew to be government lies into my reporting. So they can be real, they can be fake. I saw them at their worst as an example of the control of the American media. I saw them at their worst at the uh, Bundy Ranch standoff. They showed up a couple of days after we got there. They were there for one day as far as I could tell. They were not there's that for anybody watching it, there's that clip of where these guys were performing in the studio back in Atlanta, pretending that they were on site uh, in Iraq and pretending that there's incoming gas masks going. <laughs> this is totally fake, guys. Uh, so but Going back to the Nevada ranch standoff, they went in, they came in with a CNN truck, planted it front and center on the second day that we were there. They went around and they started trying to find the fringiest people they could so they could do character assassination on the people who were there. They failed to show up at this showdown. They considered that it was all finished because they'd been given information by their government controllers that they were going to allow Bundy to now graze his cattle, but they were not giving his cattle back. So the people that were there went down to get the cattle back. I was standing there, and I listened to the lies and the disinformation that were fed out by CNN, fed out by people like Glenn Beck. Uh, CNN interviewed Bundy later on and called him a welfare queen. They completely misrepresented his arguments. They didn't make the arguments for what he was doing. But they also completely misrepresented what happened during that standoff. They, when they had him on, they said, so are you some sort of a welfare queen and a cowboy hat is the way that they came after him. 
That is what we've seen, a pattern of behavior that we've seen over and over again. This goes back to the 1950s, to Operation Mockingbird that was created by the CIA to control the press.